Let's take a look at how we can use fallbacks using custom properties. A fallback is a value that is used when the preferred value is not available or is invalid. This is useful for ensuring that styles are still applied even if the preferred value is not supported by a particular browser or there's some error in the CSS code. We'll be working with a file that is similar to one of the ones that we worked on before. In this example, I have two of the web cards and I have a new element and a side element that just has a header and some text. In my CSS, I have revised some of the CSS slightly and just gone ahead and made a mobile first design in my project. Let me just explain how fallbacks can be used with custom properties. As you can see, I've already defined a number of custom properties that are available for me to use throughout my project. We are taking advantage of many of those variables and using them for a variety of our different property values. Let's take the background color. Currently, it is using this neutral light color, which we've specified to be this very light whitish gray shade. If I want to provide a fallback color for any of my CSS variables, when they're being used, all you have to do is use a comma and then go ahead and place the new value that you want to use. This will ensure that in case for whatever reason, the custom property is not able to be rendered, the fallback value will show up. Another way in which you might want to use a fallback is using the font family. So you can see that I have a primary font and a headline font. Now in my variable, I'm actually specifying a fallback as well. So I'm first requesting for my primary font, Fira Sans. If that is not available, I will go for the Sans Serif. So in this case, we have a fallback built in. But if my variable was just pointing to Fira Sans, like it is right now, and we save the page and refresh our page, nothing is going to change because we already are loading this font into the project. And that is because I'm taking advantage of using my Google font up here in the head. For this example, let's just go ahead and comment out the code that we're using for the Google font. This will essentially prevent the Google fonts from loading. So if I come back to my page and I refresh my page, you're going to see that all of the font families have changed. Currently, they are using the default font family of Times New Roman. If we go back into our CSS and we come down into the body section where we're using the primary font, if I currently provide a fallback font, so we'll go ahead and use a comma and we'll pass in Verdana, and then we'll specify that we want to use a default sans serif. If I save my page and I refresh in the browser, you will see that no change is occurring. And even though the primary font is not currently loading, Everything to do with our code still is working correctly. So our first font request is Fira Sans. That is set to the primary font, but you can see that our default fonts are not kicking in. The way that the fallback works with CSS properties is that if we somehow were specifying a variable that did not exist, so I'm gonna change the name to primary fonts. If I save now, and we refresh our page, you will see that the base font that's being used on my paragraphs and whatnot is now changing to the Verdana font. So that is now kicking in. But if this was specified back as our primary font and we saved the page and refreshed, if you keep an eye on the paragraph, the paragraph is going to revert to Times New Roman. So the fallback will work, but maybe not in the exact same way that you may hope that it should work. What I will usually do in regards to font anyways, is I will pass the fallback into the variable declaration like I have it here. And in this case, if our Fira Sans is not loaded, it will go ahead and display whatever the default sans serif is. 
So if we come back to our page once again, and if we refresh, you're going to see that the default paragraph font now switches to a sans serif. And that is whatever sans serif is currently loaded as my default sans serif in my browser. So I just wanted to mention fallbacks and show you how they may work and why you may want to use them inside of your code.